coming up on Mountain News this morning, Whitesburg is coming together to help fight addiction in its community. And a recent study shows how feasible a four-year public college in southeastern Kentucky could truly be. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it's 531. I'm Madison Carmouche and today is December 1st, 2023. Let's check in with First Alert meteorologist Cameron Aaron for a look at your forecast this morning. Now, Cameron, I forgot my umbrella, but I wow, guess that was a Madison, bad idea. You just did not listen to the forecast over the past few days, did you? No, I guess I forgot. That's insane, but yeah, we are looking at a few showers across the mountains this morning and more rain chances on the way for the rest of this morning. So don't be like Madison. Be sure to grab the jacket and the umbrella as you wake up and walk out the door tracking those rain chances. The good news, no severe weather, no heavy rainfall, but a few pockets of moderate showers are possible. Zooming into a few moderate showers in Monticello, also close to Somerset for Pulaski County, also into Whitley and McCreary County as well. A few more light to moderate showers near the mountain Parkway for Estill County, also into Powell and Wolf counties, not too far away from Campton, and a soggy morning on the way for our friends in Moorhead over in Rowan County as well. A few spotty showers in southwest Virginia, also in Pike County, into portions of West Virginia. So again, some showers are likely as we kick off your Friday. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s down to 39 from Manchester, 45 in Somerset, 50 over in Jackson this morning, and those temperatures do rebound into the middle and upper 50s later on today. Also tracking some breezy weather. We could see winds up to 15, 20, possibly more than 20 miles per hour and then tracking some 60s by this weekend. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Madison. Cameron, thank you. Organizations in Whitesburg are partnering to provide more resources for those struggling with aspects of addiction. WYMT's RJ Johnson spoke with officials on how they have, they hope, this will have a big impact on the community. Fighting against drug abuse in Whitesburg, Mountain Comprehensive Health Corporation Behavioral Health Director Sanja Adams says it cannot be done alone. Everyone here that is involved in treatment wants the best for the, our population and our community, and it's almost impossible for one entity alone to provide that to everyone and meet every need by every patient. So they partnered with the Kentucky River District Health Department to create a recovery hub in Whitesburg. We wanted to replicate this uh, hub in other communities, and Letcher County is just a prime area to do this because they've already got a great spirit of partnership down there. Kentucky River District Health Department Public Health Director Scott Lockard says they want to meet people wherever they may be. Find out what resources they need, if it's counseling, if it's linkage to a primary care provider, if they're ready for a bed in a treatment facility, they can get that. Adams says that goes into every aspect along the journey of addiction. We want to make sure that we meet those mental health needs. We want to make sure we meet those substance use needs. And then just the basic human needs for people like food, shelter, clothing, heat, things that a lot of people take for granted are really big sources of stressors. Saying it will take several organizations coming together to help this cause. In Whitesburg, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Lockard says they will be implementing ideas and services used in Lee County, the first recovery hub they have created and seen success with. In Pulaski County, the funerals for two murder victims will be held today. Ardith Prather Jr. and Ardith Prather III were killed November 7th. 20-year-old Austin Prather is accused of their murder. He is their son and grandson. The investigation into the murder is still ongoing. The service will be held today at 1 p.m. at First Baptist Church in Somerset. A Floyd County woman is behind bars after police say she was trafficking drugs. Deputies brought 40-year-old Jill Atkins of Harold into custody last Sunday. They say she was in possession of more than 40 grams of meth. She also had plastic baggies, digital scales, and other paraphernalia along with prescription pills. Atkins faces multiple charges and was taken to the Floyd County Jail. A woman has been arrested in connection with a shooting that sent a man to the hospital Wednesday in Floyd County. Officials with the Floyd County Sheriff's Office arrested the woman in the Blue River area. The sheriff says the shooting occurred at a home along State Route 404. 
The woman, whose name was not released, was charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The sheriff says more charges are possible. A Kentucky woman is having trouble selling her home because of a cybersecurity breach. Loan Care Mortgage Servicing was temporarily down this week. They say it is because of a cybersecurity incident. It took them days to fix the issue, putting people's home sales in limbo. Julia Sandor talked with one woman who says she's frustrated by the situation and hopes there is a solution to her problem. For a family of five, selling, buying, and moving to a new home can be a big hassle. We've been planning for a while to close today and close on our new house tomorrow. For Ashlyn Tenhagen, it's been more like a nightmare. So we found out this week when we have been trying to cancel our auto draft mortgage payment on our current house um, that their systems are down. Like other homeowners across the country, Tenhagen was affected by a cybersecurity incident at Loan Care. In a report filed by Fidelity National Financial, the parent company of Loan Care, they say the company became aware of the incident on November 19th. The same report says the incident wasn't contained until November 26th. They're telling us nothing. They can't tell us. I mean, we haven't even as much as got a message from them stating like we're cyber attacked, like we have received no notice from anybody. We're pretty much left in the dark right now. With another family waiting to move in, they're left with filled boxes, empty walls, and a check written to their title company. So of course in the process, the title company is like, we now need two months of mortgage in order, you know, to cover them um, to let you guys close. So we were supposed to come out of this after we close with like a couple grand and now we're going to be under probably three grand. Several phone calls, error messages, and $4,600 later, Ten Hagen is hoping to be packed up and on her way to her new home this weekend. Living in boxes, we, you know, we have a baby who's chewing on everything. So I'm like, okay, we either like unpack everything, repack everything, which is hard enough packing one. So we're like, you know what, we're just going to pay the money, hope that they settle it and we get the money back and just hope for the best. In Pendleton County, Julia Sandor, WKYT. It's been an issue discussed for decades, the lack of a public four-year college in southeastern Kentucky. The Council of Post-Secondary Education recently studied how a four-year university would perform in the region. They were directed to do so through Kentucky Senate President Robert Stiver's Senate Joint Resolution 98. In the study, Hazard was noted as the most central location in the region. CPE did note in their study that while the preferred method was to make Hazard CTC a standalone college, that would not be fully endorsed without further study. So while Hazard has already been working with CPE throughout the course of this study, we also recognize that there will be additional study needed. Plans have not been made official, but officials are excited that Hazard is just in the discussion following the study. Congressman Hal Rogers will have at least one opponent in the next in next year's primary election. Republican Dr. Dana Edwards of Manchester filed to run against him yesterday. According to his campaign website, Edwards is a surgeon and a farmer. Congressman Rogers, the dean of the House, has been elected to 22 consecutive terms and has served since 1981. Dr. Edwards says he is running to restore conservative leadership and fight for the interest of Kentucky's 5th Congressional District. The Archer Park Light Spectacular is underway in Prestonsburg, bringing the Christmas magic with more than 1 million lights. The drive through light display is open today until the new year, every day from about 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And there are several other fun activities for folks to enjoy in Archer Park along with the lights. Prestonsburg Mayor Les Stapleton says every year the park brings joy to thousands of people. It's an opportunity to get out here, enjoy the lights, enjoy our characters, enjoy Santa, carnival rides, uh, funnel cakes. That's always a big treat. We want people to have, be able to get in the Christmas spirit and that's what it's all about. The Archer Park Light Show is free, and if you don't want to drive, you can get out and walk around or pay $3 and ride the Shriners train. Another holiday tradition, Christmas for Charity, will be at the First Federal Center at Hazard Community and Technical College Saturday from 8 p.m. until 1 a.m. A different cause or organization benefits from the event each year. 
This time, the proceeds will go to the Housing Development Alliance. HDA Executive Director Scott McReynolds says they are excited to use the money to continue flood recovery efforts. So obviously right now the big thing in our is the flood recovery. Um, we, you know, there's still hundreds of folks who need help getting back in a house, need a new house. Uh, and so this money will help us help more people quicker. The, in, the event includes food, drinks, dancing, and a live band. Tickets for $85 are still available at Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance Janet Smith Agency on Morton Boulevard. They will also be sold at the door for $100. We also want to tell you about a big holiday event in London, the 2023 Christmas concert presented by the Southeast Kentucky Community Chorus will be on Sunday at 4 p.m. The free event will take place at the First Baptist Church in London. More, sing more than 70 singers will perform at the concert. Coming up, Andre 3000 is in the headlines after breaking records with the longest song ever recorded to make the Billboard 200. Plus, we are tracking a mild first weekend of December. Those details coming up after this break.